Hello, hello everyone. So glad that you could join me today. Today I have a very, very, very special guest, Mr. Buddy Ayers, Richard by the way. Uh -oh. And <laughs> he, I tell you, he has a very, 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 very powerful testimony. Um, if you can, uh, when you're watching this video, share it with as many people as you can because Mr. Richard is going to go into his life and his testimony of uh, being in, in prison and how the life was there, how his life was. He's going to go into, um, we're going to talk a little bit about his childhood and his upbringing. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the things he went through and suffered through and how God brought him through. Um, you do not want to miss this. So sit down, prop your feet up, and get ready to join me and Mr. Buddy Ayers, and let's go. All right, Mr. All Buddy, right. thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, All right, well, we're going to go ahead, we're going to get started. So um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your childhood and how you were brought up? Uh, I remember it was, I don't remember what part of the year it was, it was in 1970, and uh, I don't remember who the folks were now, but they come by the house and they invited us to church. The church was going to come to have a picture of And my youngest sister Mary wanted to go, so they could come out and grab it. Well, next week my other sister wanted to go. So both of them went, and then, you know, uh, I would say probably, I'm not for sure how long it was, but it wasn't long before we was all, by 1971, we was all in the church going down. And we stayed there till. Probably a couple of years they built a new church down up in uh, I want to say we stayed in church then until I did. Well, I quit school in 1970, so I moved to uh, Of course, uh, once once you leave the church, you get out here in the world, it's kind of strange things start to happen. Uh, as opposed to earlier, the path got wider and there's more opportunities. We can get off and down the path and start doing different things. And, uh, just back and forth between up Greenwood and Greenville for the better part of 10, 15 years. And then uh, around 1986, we moved to Alton. Uh, again, back and still back and forth in and out of church. Didn't really. I most of the time went to church because that was what was required. I moved back home with my parents. If you live where you go to church. And that was just out of the stand. You know, I just had to uh, go to church. So I, was, I was going because of uh, it was an assessment, not because I wanted to. Uh, and that's probably one of the one reasons I quit going because I had quit school and moved out. So I didn't go to church. I wanted to do my own thing. Uh, I would say probably got involved with. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, selling drugs. And I wasn't really a big drug user. I loved to drink and just be crazy. But, uh, that went on to, uh, I would say, probably around October, November of '99. Uh, the girl that I was with, uh, we got married. Things never should have, but, you know, things happened, progressed. And, uh, and the first few days of January, uh, it got serious I did in there. Uh, actually, she wound up dying at, by my, I mean, my, my home. Uh, well, it was accidental, whatever. Uh, the person I was trying to kill uh, kind of pulled me in front of still my, still my responsibility. Okay, let me back up a little bit. So, this was your first wife and mm -hmm. this this was your fourth wife, fourth. and and you said she she ended up dying. Yeah, yeah. Was um, can you go into the depth of that or? Uh, it was just she was fooling around, and I think probably was more aggravated than angry more than anything. She took the kids, my son, the young son, and her kids too, and they were sitting in the living room while they were off doing whatever and kind of, uh, I even had a buddy of mine, that, and I'm not going to use his name, but he called me and come got me and took me up there and she was supposed to be working, he was showing that they was, we'd sit there and watch it, go back up and talk to him. And then I'll tell you, 
if you get some, well, once it gets inside your head, they'll control you. Definitely control you, which again, that now I can see that it wasn't a normal man. None of them could could, could do that. Uh, especially if you're, not, if you're unsafe, you're not going to, you can't have it. And it's just, uh, I don't want to get in that to get the time to go to the cross. Oh, okay. Speak on that. Uh, one thing just led to another, and uh, like I said, The guy, and again, I won't use his name because it's just, it's just something I can't, right. I can't say. Uh, in fact, they don't, they, all they have is what I told, told them. And the investigation showed up eight different ways from that side of the family. Nobody was telling the truth. Because they didn't want the truth out. And, uh, Again, I don't want to use names, they keep wanting to pop out, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect the family. Right, family. right. Uh, because even when I got out, I went back. My mom and dad, they didn't talk to speak to me what happened in their family. And that was hard on them, I know that. Right. Uh, but it, it led to something that, you know, you always say you won't do things. Yes. I don't say that no more. I, and I teach my daughter, don't ever don't say, what, say you what you won't do. <laughs> yes. Because I'm telling you, that'd be the first thing you do. Yes. But I remember, this is probably three or four weeks before it happened, and I sat down and said, look, she was from the Church of God of Prophecy. Mm -hmm. So she knows this stuff. And we talked. And I said, look, God's telling me something, because he was showing me pictures of me in a coffin. Mm, I, I mean, that's what I could see, and I called our pastor over at uh, Stonefield. I had him try to talk to him. And, uh, but anyway, it went on for two or three weeks, and the Sunday, I think it was January 2nd, on Sunday, the, uh, what's the church got a prophet in there? Oh, oh, okay. It's not church got a prophet, it's there at Greenwood. I played softball. And they had a new pastor, and this was his first Sunday, and he wanted to meet all the guys, so we went to church there. And I was kind of like, hey, this is, this is what we're doing now. But the sermon that he preached was directed at us. You don't know about, don't know when, don't know how. He said, but in the next few days, weeks, whatever, there's going to be a tragedy to take place in somebody's family. So I don't know who it is, I don't know why. And I didn't know this until, you know, I didn't really put this together until uh, I got locked up in this transfer department. You know, I really, if you could sit down and talk and think, you could figure stuff out, and I said, no, God would tell me something there. But instead of walking away, I was too prideful to walk away from what I had built and what I had there. And it, it wasn't so much as me going separate and being on my own. It was about what I had put into the marriage and there was nothing. I was getting nothing out. Right. Uh, of course, my family gave me a hard time. I couldn't go across the street to see my folks. And so it really, I'm telling you, it was a mental thing more than anger. But once anger and mental problems mix together, it becomes dangerous. I will say and that again. Mental? mental and anger become a very dangerous combination. Yes. I'm telling you this. Not only that, but when you're like that and you're a sinner, then the devil makes it ten times worse because you're not in control anymore. No, you're not. And he controls and things happen that you can have no control anymore. Uh, I remember that Tuesday, which would have been the fourth, that uh Hey, when I was driving, I was going, I was driving to stop. I mean, I was. I missed the driveway about 20 foot. Were you an alcoholic or you just drank? Well, I put the, a drinker drinks seven, and I always drink every night, every day. Yes. So I don't want to call myself a drunk or an alcoholic, but I drink every day. So uh, it depends how you look at it. If you drink every night, you drink every day, every night, you're going. Yes. I mean, I don't know how you put it. Uh, but I remember getting up Tuesday morning 
and uh, getting my luggage before we had to pull me out. And I moved them thing out. Every Thursday I would go to Memphis to the auction, and uh, that's where I'd come. And I remember this Wednesday when I come in, she needed some money or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. I remember writing her check. But I also remember going picking up the money for a job I had done. And that was $750 for transmission mission in the car. And this one had no bearing on that, but I'm just... Uh, so I left the next morning to we'll come in, and she flagged me down when I come in, and said that I had a little box of stuff to know she wanted me to come over there. And I said, okay, she said, but wait till the kid's gone. So I mean, you know, that didn't sound, my mama didn't sound about the kind of Were y'all separated at this time? I just, I just moved across the floor. So actually, I didn't have all the stuff I had yet. I never got the rest of the stuff in up here. Uh, but went in there. It was funny because she had lights in the bedroom on. They had the lights in the uh, kitchen on. And that was it. Everybody was gone. Uh, like I said, I don't want to get into the detail or whatever. But, uh, things happened. And, and, and like I said, she wound up. Uh, I wanted to keep her instead of him. He was there. The, the guy the she guy. was having, well, she was with? He was, he was there. Uh, and, I, and I remember just playing like it happened 10 minutes ago. I could, I could see now as he was in the front. He runs out the front door. I never did. I remember going across the street to my sister's house to look for help, and there was nobody there. And that's why I shot myself. Oh my God. I mean, uh, again, I should be in the hand. Okay, question. So, after you shot, she was shooting at him, but you ended up shooting her, right. you shot yourself. Right. Um, what, were you, what was going through your mind when you, gra when you actually grabbed that gun? I mean, what, 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 what state of mind was you in? What was going through your uh, mind? I really don't know that there was anything going through my mind because there was a possession that I had no control over. And again, now I can I can I can define that moment because uh, it's the difference between being saved and being unsaved. Mm -hmm. With saved, you have a, you, through Christ, I would have had the power to refuse this temptation or the power that was on me, but I had no control of what happened. Because I can remember every minute, but it was like I was shackled, I was stiff, I was. Uh, I couldn't move, because mm. I was not, I mean, it's a control that, it, I wouldn't want nobody to have to go through that. It's like you're doing something that you don't want to do. So you this is a spirit. It, it is. It's yes. an evil spirit. Yes, it is. It's a demonic spirit. Yes, what it, it is. is. And people don't believe it, but I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you today, it's real. I live through that. Yes. I should have been dead a long time ago. The things that I've done through life, and like I said, I'm not going to go every point, but I, I, I want to tell you, the road that I've taken, started out real good but it got wider and the wider it gets there's more opportunity and there's more stuff to get into more I'm not, there's a world full of stuff out there but my life when i got actually before they 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 dropped charges they had me charged for money which you know dead to right you know i never deny anything i just wouldn't tell who the guy was Right. Because in the back, I still had this evil spirit that I'll get him when I get out. Mm -hmm. uh, as long, I was never going to get out. I'm looking at life since never, no opportunity to get out. And uh, I was kind of depressing, but at the time, the state of mind that I was in, I didn't care because I needed to be somewhere secluded where I could get my head straight. Right. And I didn't want to take drugs and stuff, and that's the first thing they want to do. They want to give you this and that. I'm not great. I stayed in Memphis. Uh, I'm back with it. That happened, and I remember them taking us both to uh, a They flew her out first because she was in more serious trouble than I did. They had put a chest tube in me, and I was uh, flown out probably 10 minutes behind me. We get to Memphis, and uh, they have us both in a room there after. Somebody put the tube in upside down so they had to go in and do it again. And I remember that. And I remember a nurse 
little young white girls to come in, and she was just lovely to me, you know. And and I can, and it made me think. And if I'm looking back on it now, I think this: Hey, she must have been in a very abusive relationship. But the first thing she did was throw the judgmental remarks at me, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of make me mad. But then uh, they removed her from from me, you know, got away from me. And, uh, I stayed up there for four to five days. If you, can, if I can ask, if you will share, where where did you shoot yourself? Uh, once in the head, and once in the chest. My God. They both be <laughs> again, uh, not knowing the things, and I had no, I had no, I had no plans to be here. I mean, I was just, and it wasn't. Again, uh, it's, it's it's you're trying to stop the gun from going, and, and you can't. Mm -hmm. That's how strong, and how, how powerful the evil spirits are. Yes. Demonic spirits is what I say they are. That's what they uh, are. And that's what they are, and they control you. But again. I'll say this again, anger, mental, mm -hmm. all, and strength, all this stuff balled up to one, it's worse than a stick of dynamite because when you blow, you don't care who you hurt. You sure right. You don't care who you destroy. But when the smoke clears, it's the people that really open their eyes up and want to make a difference, want to change. They're the ones that seize their mistakes. They see the people that they hurt and they, this, and they want to try to and I still can see this, but I still didn't feel like I was at the point where I needed to uh, decide what I want to do. And I remember them coming December the 12th, 2000, and he says, this is the DA, the lawyer, the lawyer, the judge, and everybody that was there. We went into the judge's chamber, and uh, he said, this is a lesser charge meeting or whatever they call it, I don't remember exactly what And he says, are you willing to take a, a plea bargain, take a lesser charge to sign today? First thing I said, yeah, because I'm looking at a life sentence. Mm -hmm. Now I've got 20 years, and he explained, and, and they give you three reasons uh, why he had to give me the whole 20 years. But if he hadn't given me the whole 20 years, I got a $60,000 fine to go with whatever he gives me. Right. If he give me 19, I got 60,000 dollars. But he give me the whole 20 years, and uh, that's okay. He said, but first I want to explain something to you. He says, this is what I'm. I knew what I was getting before I even went to court. He says, this is three three strike law. He said, the first thing is you don't live there anymore. That's okay. Second place is you took a weapon to a non-dwelling place of yours. The third thing was that. You shot it from behind. I'm thinking, okay. I didn't really have a whole lot of choice, you know. Right. Uh, circumstances still affect the three questions. Uh, I said, okay. That's, I'm thinking to myself, hey, man, that's a whole lot better than because the life sentence carries 35 years before you can get up for parole, and you don't know if you're gonna get parole. Mm -hmm. Something like that. You probably and, and he said, oh, I, I just about guarantee you, you will never get out. But I had good praying folks. Uh, people in the right place that believed in me and uh, had more faith in me than I did myself. But, I mean, I, I just wasn't nothing. I mean, I fooled people that wouldn't know good. But I had people that really cared about me and loved me on the other side of the fence. I come back and I remember the lady said, she says, you know, you don't never show uh, any sadness or nothing. And I really didn't understand what she was talking about. And I remember uh, Mr. Tepper, he was over at the jail and he said, well, you're about the happiest fellow I've ever seen that, that, that uh, you just received 20 years. Why are you so happy? And I, and I thought, I said, well, I went to my life since 20 years. And I, that's the reason I smiled at it. And I said, it's not called, and here's another thing. I don't feel that nobody has a right to take a look his life. I don't care what the circumstances is. Now, if somebody was to break in on us, you know, I, I don't know if I could kill somebody. I, mean, I, I, I don't want to say kill. I don't know if I could take somebody's life because it's, it, it, it eats away at you. Yes. Uh, and another thing that I had to learn, too, the hard way is that God will forgive you only to forgive yourself first. Mm -hmm. And this is what this, this, this preacher taught me. He said, once you learn to forgive yourself, God forgive you. 
But if you can't forgive yourself, huh? I mean, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Well, anyway, we wound up 20 years, and I wound up with, uh, and I remember the preacher coming and told me, he says, uh, you're not gonna do 20 years. I said, well, hmm. The papers ain't different, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, I'm telling you, you won't do 20 years. And uh, he died while I was in a both of both the preachers to psychiatrists to come to see me. Pastor told me this. I had an opportunity to get out early. And I told your husband this. Uh, but I had to sign some papers saying I'm crazy. I wasn't crazy when it happened. Mm -hmm. I wasn't crazy. And they looked at me like I said, but you realize what we're doing? I said, yes, I understand this. They want you but to But I understand cancel. this. Understand this. I'm the man who's got to look in that mirror and look at me. Yes. Not you. And I said, I need, I, you know, and that, that's the choice that I made. I ain't never run for nothing I've done. I've always paid the price for whatever, or whatever, right, wrong, or whatever. It didn't matter. I've done my time, and uh, I remember September the 15th, and a lot of my folks were there, man, that was a day in my life. That's when you got out? That's when I got out. Okay, September. I got a question. Yes. So did you and, did you and the, um, that wife, did you all have children? No, ma'am. You all didn't have any children? All my kids were born before then. Before then, okay. Before then. Uh, that makes it sound like a mold. <laughs> uh, but I got out. One thing, but now during my time there, the 10 years, eight months, and two weeks, if you've been locked up, you keep, you know how long you've been locked up. I went from being a nobody to somebody. Uh, my first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to Want to get into school. I tried to get jobs in Parkland, Green County, couldn't. I got to Franklin County. I said, doors just opened up. I was able to get into school. And I've been out of school at that time, probably 35 years. Mm -hmm. So I was given a GED in less than two weeks. And uh, actually, I had nine days to study for it. I had no clue how I passed it, <laughs> but I did. I got it. And the Lord. God brought me through that. Well, the other opportunities come up. They have a plan, a, a, a religious group that comes in once a year. It's called Cairo. I've heard of Cairo. And I, I got I've a chance to spend a weekend with them guys, and that was really a big inspiration. And they set me up with a bunch of people that were coming through with Bible study classes. So I was taking maybe two or three a day, every day, amongst all my jobs. So I was saying, I stay busy 20 something hours a day, so I didn't have a chance to get in trouble. But I stayed busy, and I worked my way out of there. And uh, got home, but the closer I got to home, the sicker I got. Because mm -hmm. the closer I get it, it started in my head, the old devil started, and I know it's the devil working in my head, said, you know what, what you've done is wrong. These folks ain't going to accept you back. Mm -hmm. And the closer we get, man, the sicker I get. I, get, I got so sick, I just thought I just, I got there, and man, it, it eased me and eased me. I'd get up, I wouldn't sleep, my nephew. He uh, woke up, and I, I guess I woke him up one morning, hot back, dog park or something. He came out there to come, he thought I was somebody, somebody just patrolling his backyard, getting in there, you know, maybe trying to steal something. And uh, I mean, I got to do something. This is the way of me. Well, I remember talking to, uh, he's passed away now. He was the preacher up in Grenada. And I went to see him and talked to him. And he said, Look, he said, let's pray about it. I prayed about it. And, I didn't have any more problems with that. Because I hadn't, people, it's crazy, but people, after that day, they would call me and need to come by and see me. Come by and see me, and I was, I was really nervous to get them to go by there. I said, what are they gonna do to me? Mm -hmm. But the more people I got involved with, the easier it got, and people didn't, didn't hold a gun to get me. Right. You know, I said people make mistakes. Right. I'm talking even people that, I didn't think like me, were calling me. They're talking to me and they say, you know what, it's pretty good. I have a question. Yes, sir. So the children that you did have, how did you going to prison affect your relationship with your children? Uh, well, the girls, I mean, like the first day home, they were there. They would come there, you know, and uh, my older son had a little, didn't really know, but my younger son, he doesn't have any, he still doesn't have anything to do with it. Because I don't know if, uh, and I'm sure that He's got one side of the story, but he won't listen to me, won't talk to me, so I'm just putting God's hand. I just, 
to try to talk to the time to time. It's like, hey, uh, let's see. Uh, never, it won't answer the phone. I call him. But you know what? Right about that tune, and, and God said, just do what you do. You know, he'll come around where he wants. I hope he does, but uh, uh, if not, but uh, again, it's, it's where God has intervened, and, and, and I'm not left without my family. If most guys don't have a family to go to once they get out. When they get out, that's it. It's a, it's a, it's a revolving door. They want you to come back. But again, mindset, you have to make your mind up that you're going to do better for yourself. Because they don't care if you do better or not. They don't care if you, you know, you, you try to improve yourself. It's a self thing. you got to do it. But you can't do it without God. I'm going to tell you that. Sure the guys pick up the Bible. I've seen them pick them up and dump them on their way out the gate. Mm. And be back in there. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to get to that too. I made up my mind that, you know, this is, not, this is the way I was prayed. This is where I need to be. Uh, I had several incidents with uh, uh, that family again to where it got not really serious, but the people again in the right places were able to deal with them. And then me and my wife, after we got married, we started going to her family reunion, but one of the, some of her kin people were dating one of their cousins and they made it so we just going. Okay. I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. that was bringing me to my next question. Uh -oh. The wife that you have now, beautiful sweet lady, yeah. right now. Um, how did you uh, how did you meet her and and um how did you all get to where you all today? And how long have you all been married? Uh first of all, I've known since she was a kid. <laughs> we lived around the corner from each other and we have dated several times over the years. Uh we just never it's never got to that point of view. Uh, back in, uh, I want to say, 2016, she divorced and was moving over here and she found a place. And we had been talking after she had been there. So we got a money to get her a place. And uh, brought her to the house and introduced her to my daddy. And then I got to kind of kicked to the side because daddy just fell in love with her. My whole family did. My whole family did. She's a very I mean, she is. She was God sent. She did, God sent her back to me. Should have held on to her then. You know, I probably, probably wouldn't work then. And, and, and to be honest with you, even though we've been married a little five years, it was just a few years ago that if I really hadn't got in church and hadn't really submitted everything to God, and I really didn't at the time, I wouldn't be sitting here and I wouldn't be with her. Because none of this would matter anymore. I'd, I'd gone back to this myself. I would have, it. that ain't no lie. But uh, thank God she was around. My dad passed away because, I mean, she was there. She's been a crutch. Uh, we was in, we've been in, like I said, we've been in church about, with the Brother James in about four years now. But my life really did start to change to about, right after I come back from Indiana last year on the tape because it was a, First men, group of men we've been to. Uh, we went there, and I still didn't open up until till, till earlier this year when, and this this stuff that I'm doing now is already shown to me that I wouldn't do it uh, yes. because again I didn't feel like I was good enough. And I remember this happened when Brother Grant said, "Hey, I want you to come and talk to our guy." And I said, "Okay." I have no clue what I'm going to do because I've never done this before. And I remember studying, and every time I try to study, go to work the next day, man, everything go wrong. It went like that about two weeks, and God kept telling me, what you want to do? What I want you to do? Yes. I don't know what I want you to do. Yes. I kept going, and finally, just, I come in about 4 o'clock at Thursday, and I had to have something ready by Saturday. I ain't got no way. And I said, you know what to do. Yes. I said, no, it's yeah, you do. I said, all right, I'm going to try it and see what happens. Well, it was very short. And uh, when I got here Saturday, that, to the church Saturday, Brother Grant gets up and he's talking about what I've got done right now, what God done given. me. And I said, well, I, that's confirmation that hey, I'm on the right track anyway. Uh, I had no plans to get into the testimony part of it uh, about 
what happened over my life, but it just come out. And there's been so many preachers just come up. And I remember one night, for instance, we were going to pray, to pray for my, I think my niece. And the guy, before he started to pray for us, he looked at me and said, you know, you're not even supposed to be here. We're supposed to still be locked up. And that's what I'm, and I'm going to go back a little bit. With a praying mom and dad, yes, Lord. anything's possible. Yes. That's right. But the seed is planted when you hear, when you get up here, it comes it come. Now I wish my mom and dad were still alive. I, this just just for a minute just to see that I come from nothing. It's no, it'd be a day I, I see it. Yes, it will. I guess I guess people in the right places, God puts them there for a reason. Yes. And, I, and these people to help me, I've done a lot of wrong. I've done a lot of wrong. But you know what? God used the devil to set me free. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, I, and somebody else admitted something. I don't know what it was about that. that they'll take what the devil does and turn it right on him. And God uses him to make good. Yes. And I feel like that's what he's done with me because, like I said, I should have been dead. I still should be locked up. But God just wouldn't do them hence. He could see things that I could see. Yes, he, yes. But until I completely submitted myself, I always did have a problem. I'm going to have a problem. And I'm hard hit. I don't listen to someone. But when it comes down to tooth and now, I love her to death. There ain't nothing I wouldn't do for her. I would defend her. And I would do anything for her. But that's all. that was all irrelevant if I still don't submit to God. Right. When I did, we got better. Mm -hmm. Finances got better. Yes. Uh, and really, the finances got better when I started paying. <laughs> I worried about the bill, but I got to the point. Everything I got, God gave me anyway. It's His anyway. Right. So if I lose this, what? But like Job, now if you take one, He's gonna give me two back. Right. So I don't worry about nothing with you. So if it ain't about God, it ain't about. Me. Amen. And, I, I, and I wish that could just, 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 just. Find a room full of folks that, that would sit down and listen to me. And, and, and not because I know everything. It's because I've been down this road and it's a rough road. Uh, the advantage that I had is that I had a Christian family, sisters and brothers, right. that stood behind me on the outside of the walls. They were there when I come out. Right. I didn't have, I, if it had been for them, I wouldn't have a place to go. They seem to be a halfway house, but they don't care about you. It boils down to you got to have a family that loves you, and you got to have Christ. If you ain't got Christ in life, I mean, those two things are, are, are the major uh, things that you need when you hit the free yeah. I had 36 months on paper, and people said I wouldn't do it. You know what? God worked me seven days a week for almost three years. I didn't get in trouble, Christ. I didn't miss a payment. God made a way for me to have money to pay it, He made a way for me to have work. I didn't get in trouble, and I, was, and, and, and I stayed. Every day and after we got married, I stayed with my dad until he passed away. Uh, but there's so many things I can sit and say. The biggest thing is, is that uh, submitting and opening myself up to accept what God had for me right. to do. And once I've done that, like I said, everything got better. Uh, it gets emotional sometimes talking about it, but, you know. That's about my mom and dad, because I mean, they had, they played a song yesterday from uh, one of the, at the convention we had this weekend for the Crosby from the time several months ago, and uh, but it's like it hit me just just as hard between the eyes. I mean, uh, I cried, I cried because it left something empty inside because. Uh, even though I was there with my dad, I was there to talk to her. You don't know, and I thought she would come home and I would have time to really sit down and talk to her and apologize for some of the things I've said and done. I didn't get a chance to. So it's really hard yes. to know that. Uh, my dad, uh, I mean, he was just like, 
he's more than a best friend. He's worked with him and he taught me everything I know and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful now for the times that they, that they did make me go to church that I do understand the things. Uh, the other thing is, it's just been, uh, I want people to understand that uh, no matter what you've done, there's still life. There's yes. still a life outside the gates. There's still a life. I mean, it's never too long as you got breath. I mean, there's still a chance. Yes, no matter is. what you've done. God says that uh, no sin is greater than other. I don't care if you stole a dollar or if you killed somebody. Amen. The forgiveness is there. Yes, it is. You know, uh, like I said, I was always, and I, I was always, I'm going to another world. Hey, this has all been several years ago when I had COVID. My, one of my best friends, we worked together for years. But we let a little job come between us. And I, and I, and I went from not talking to him to hate him. I'm talking pure hate. I'm, I'm going to church every day. But I had a lot of hatred for this mm. I got sick and uh, wound up in the hospital and stuff. And, and, and these folks, I mean, it's, I thought it was just something. Never think he's going to get it. I got it. Right. And I thought I, I thought I was gone. And the doctor in the best office said, I don't know what's keeping you here. He said, you should have been gone. There's people dying that was less, had less problems than you got. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I thought about, you know what? God ain't got, got something for me. I, I, I reckon he got something for me. You know, I got to come home and I was telling her, I said, I'm not so old, I said, I want to come home. And I, I, and I prayed, prayed, God, I mean, just, just in a three days span, about three days, everything got good, I got to come home. I, I remember, I said, I need to come home and talk to you. God was putting that on my heart for mm -hmm. Well, I took a shower and I sat down at the table right there. He calls me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thing God works in different ways, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta submit yourself to it, and you gotta open up. Right. Because you, I try to do things on my own. I'm one that, I don't like to ask nobody for no help. Right. I want to do it myself. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that. Some things you can't do. Right. God wants you to do it, but you've got to let Him lead the way. That's right. He's got, He's got to be the one that does it. Yes. And uh, <laughs> well, anyway, we thought we talked. And, uh, he come to church with us a couple times. I mean, he's, he's a good Christian man. It's just, it's a don't that would work that. And if you if you give him a little bit, he'll stretch it. Sure will. And, and and I'll tell you something else I've had to deal with is when you're praying and, and, and talking with God, you got to be careful because the other guy trying to sound just like him. Mm -hmm. Make things sound, and he'll make things sound just good. Uh, but you got to learn, and I'm learning. I'm still learning to tell the difference because. He's so sneaky. Yes. And he'll paint the picture so good. But you got to understand of what God would do and what God won't do. Right. So sometimes he'll, he'll make the thing look too good. God's not going to do that. That's right. And, and, and I'm thankful. And I'm really thankful for the people that, that I'm around that really have helped me and still helping me and open the doors where I can go through them. And, uh, I don't know where I don't know what's in front of us or what's in store for us or whatever it is. I'm gonna take the bull by the horn. And go that was with gonna it. be my next question. I yeah. was just gonna <laughs> ask, where, what's in store? Where are you and your wife headed now? And I like to add her in there because good, she's your yeah. help me. She's 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 more than just to help me. She's my crook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to do the rest of my life without her. Amen. Uh, I would. Uh, She's, she's been that. Some days when I, I can't go and can't do nothing, I remember what I got at home. Right. And I know that that's where my inner strength comes from sometimes. I know I depend on God for a lot. And I tell him, put him on. I should tell you, I don't, I don't care if they come tomorrow and get everything I got. Right. I got bigger than that. Amen. And I just probably go, I don't care. We went for about six, eight months. I did hard work. But guess what? Somehow the bills got paid every mm -hmm. month. Yes, Lord. My help comes from me. From, the from Lord. God. That's right. And I tell her, don't worry about it. Amen. I can't take none of the women. Sure. So right. I don't care. Uh, it's his anyway. It sure is. They give it to somebody to me. Amen. And that's the way I feel about it. That's the way I uh, feel as well. Uh, I've, 
I'm getting excited about our new church building that we're going to be working on in, in before long, so uh, I want to make time to do that. I also want to make time to do what some of the other guys have talked to, several preachers about coming and speaking, so uh, that's what I want to do. And I feel like that's your, that's your off next go. I think you, so. You'll be doing this. This may just be your starter. Well, I've never done this before, too, but you know what? It feels good. Amen. I'm, I'm, Hallelujah. I mean, yeah, you two guys there, I mean, y'all, y'all and Otis and this church here, this is like my second church because I was given orders last night. I couldn't come here. <laughs> I couldn't move my membership here. I had to stay where I was. But I said, you know, it, it, and being active in our church and this one, and talking to Brother Grant last night, I want to be able to, and I want to wait to cool down. So I want to, again, this is what I'm seeing. I want to be able to. I'm jealous of the women. The women always have 50, 60 folks. We can't get 10. You are so I that. want my men, I want us to build up. And so here's what I'm saying. They're not going to come in off the street if they don't know about you. That's right. That. So how am I going to get them in here unless I go out there? Right. So that's what I want to do. Could we get something set up outside that we can do it? I don't care if they name and just sit down, giving them something to eat and drink, come out and talk to them and pray with me. Amen. That's what I want to do. That's where it starts. I want to do it in Greenwood. I want to do it here. Amen. And because I got, good, I got good help over there. Amen. The best. Uh, and Donnie and some of those I've talked to and Brother Grant, and, you know, Jake and Otis. And I talk, in fact, Otis is going to do our devotion back when we go back in September when they come to Greenwood. Okay. We're going to talk to Bill Paul to get you off. <laughs> uh, I know it's hard on you, and that's what I'm saying, but uh, that's it. People are not going to come here. And there's a lot that I've realized in some I've talked to that I've known for a lot of years that didn't don't understand that there's there's a heaven and a hell. I think it's just when you die you go straight to hell. Right. But it's not that it's not, it's that. not that either. And I talked to one guy, he says, Well, I don't believe in either one. I said, Well look, where do you think you're going? He said there's an in-between place. I said, No, sir. There ain't no such thing in between. You either going up or you're going Amen. down. Amen. And if you don't believe in up, then even if you don't believe in either one of them, you're going you're going straight down. You're going sure down. is. You're not going to make it. Amen. You don't believe it. So you either got to believe in one or the other. Those folks are hard. Those I like the tough ones. The tough ones make the better ones. Yes. The easy ones are too. I, I, I don't mean to, to be condemning somebody, or something, but the people that are easily given in don't really understand what they're doing. Same. But it's the hard ones that fight against you. That's the ones I want. Amen. Because when they accept it. There's the one that's going to be with the glow. You know Amen. And they're going to be all in. They're going to be the one that's fired up and ready to Amen. go. Amen. You know, and I probably ain't as fired up, but I am fired up. But I, I, yes. I, I, I'm more than excited. I don't know the words I'm trying to find. I'm ready to get the ball rolling. Hallelujah. And we ain't going to be long before we get it going. Amen. If we, and, and, and I remember telling them that, I don't, and, and a lot of preachers the first day is, you know, about the 99. To save the one, well, that's fine. But I want to get more than one. Amen. That's. I want to get all we can get. Amen. That's you it. Know? And uh, that's that's my purpose, and that's my that's my goal is to do. Uh, the more we get, the better it's been. I want. I have one more question, okay. and I you don't have to answer. If you oh, don't I'll have you ask me. Answer. But the the your wife, your ex wife's uh, family. And the, the the her her relatives and everything. Right. Have they ever talked to you since you've been out of prison? And have they discussed things with you and and? Well, uh, I'll I'll tell you this much. It got pretty bad at one time that uh, the 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 people in the right places were able to to talk with them. And after that, they would wave when I go by or try to speak to them. Stuff. But I didn't because I was I was informed not to because they could take that. That's like if, uh, uh, just say for instance, you were that family. Mm -hmm. And you meet me in the store and talk, talk to me and I respond to you. So you can go back and tell them, hey, I feel threatened by Buddy speaking to me. Right. You know, so then I'm in danger of losing all my good time and I got to go back and do the rest of the 20 years. I've never heard of that. Yes, they can. It's, it's like a domestic thing. Uh, you're guilty until proven innocent. Yes. If you got a record, you're on that guilt. They're going to send you back. 
best you've got to tell me for something like that. And I've got several things for aggravated, you know, never been locked up, convicted, but I was one of them. I guess I brought up the old way. You didn't do a whole lot of arguing, you didn't fight. Which is not, fighting is not always the answer. Defending yourself and fighting is two different things. Uh, so my answer to that would be uh, no contact, no conversation, no stay away. Once my dad passed away, we decided to uh, not keep the trailer to move where she's at. And I'm in another county. Even I got in trouble for something I didn't do even after we was married and living in Carroll County. Mm -hmm. And then when they checked it out, oh, I got you out for something I didn't do. But you know what? Uh, I didn't get mad because I knew the guy was very thorough and he would get to the bottom of it and he'd take care of it. And he did. Without me, now, years ago, I would have I would have done something stupid. I would have done I don't do that for me. I still get mad and angry, frustrated at the time, but you know what? Uh, the brighter side is to let it go and be the better person. Amen. And, and sometimes, sometimes somebody's got to be in. Uh, you know, I, I don't want late in life. I mean, you know, I ain't old, but uh, I wish, I kind of feel like Moses. You know, Moses had three, four years sections of his life. Well, I'm on my second one, so I still got another. No, God, I got 20 more years in and then 40 on the next, so I'll get my 320. <laughs> that's what I mean. I know it's kind of silly, but uh, actually, I'm in my second life because my first one didn't go. And I got a second chance. Uh, in fact, I've had probably more chances than uh, a person deserved. So God must have something special for me to do. Because I should have been dead oh, several you. times. And, you know, and, I, and I'm very blessed and I'm thankful that people. Prayed and uh, just whatever it took to get me to where I was. Praise yeah. God. So I can look back and see a lot of them dead and gone now, but I know from people that still talk to me now, and my mama would stay in the office all the time, right? For me. And if it hadn't been for that, then I don't think I would have made it through, through the 10 years of the This was it's a rough life. It was rough for the team. So all the thanks to the Lord goes to God because I, I didn't do it. Amen. God brought me to where I'm at. I ain't done nothing the first thing on my own. Until mm -hmm. I submitted to myself to Him is when I could say, hey, I finally done something that I was supposed to do that right. was right. So, yeah. He uh, gets all the glory. All of all it. All of the glory. All of it. Not me. I didn't do it. You <laughs> are the definition of what we would call a walking, living testimony and miracle. <laughs> You are definitely, because even when you tried to take your own life, God said, nope. You wouldn't let me. And you notice that thing about it. We had a friend of ours, and, and they shoot yourself in the same spot in their chest to kill him two weeks I after know. I did. Mm -hmm. So I know that somebody had something in store for me. I know God's got something planned for me. He didn't send her back to me for that. Mm -hmm. He didn't send me to sister church. We went to several different churches. And again, and I'm gonna tell this. I ain't gonna tell the lady. But I will say this: that church I was raised up in, I was told not to sit by certain people, and that didn't work. The next week, I remember that since I've been in prison, I was a bad influence in the church. Mm. And I went to a funeral with Brother James was preaching, and I talked to him. I said, "Man, it really bothered me because that's my church. That's what I was raised up in." He said, well, you want to come to my church? And I said, well, yeah. We went to church over there, and it's like, I mean, just that's where we're supposed to be. We've been there ever since. Right. We joined the church within a couple of months there, and uh, that's where we're at, and that's where we're going to be. Amen. We're going to grow in God with him. We're going to grow in statue. We're going to whatever it takes. We're going to do. Amen. <laughs> we're going to go. And that's so sad. Don't sit by you. But it's yes, probably sir. some, ain't no telling half the stuff and oh, half the things man. a lot of the people are doing. We ain't going to get it to all that. No, but that mean, <laughs> it, it is. They, people want to control you. Uh, I'm not going to be controlled. I'll be controlled by God, but not by man. Amen. Because I've been controlled by man, and it didn't work either. Sure, amen. I mean, I went through devastation, I went through stuff, and, and I'll tell you, uh, even when we I was hard on her. I was mean to her. I have hit her a couple times. My God. You know what? 
Was this in y'all early part of y'all marriages or when y'all were dating? It's been good the last couple of years. Oh. It has. It had got in. But I knew that God had sent her to me because I needed somebody and I didn't trust anybody. Mm, I yes. Didn't. But really what showed, what God showed me really that it was her. <laughs> My family told me if we got divorced, I had to leave. She could stay. <laughs> <laughs> so they told me how much they thought of her. Yes. I ain't talking about just my sisters. I'm talking about everybody in the family. So my whole family accepted her. I and I'm telling you, so that ain't God's sense. Well, I got some ticky folk. <laughs> they <laughs> are. So that, that was a blessing. But, you know, it's just been the more doors that we open, they're open for us, the closer I think we get. Praise and God. I love them more now than I did yesterday. And I love them more tomorrow than I do today. Amen. But with God too, she told me, she said, I remember, she said, oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah. She never had a life with a church. I said, she told me that nobody was going to church. And I can't keep out of church. You know what? I like that. Amen. <laughs> and we want, to, I, we want to go wherever we can. In fact, we've got something coming up in Vicksburg this month or so. I don't know. Whoever it is, we're going to go. Amen. We're invited, so I'm going to go. I don't care what it is. You can't go. God's always going to make a way. Amen. That's what I, that's what my trust is. So. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up a little bit. But can you? What would you tell or leave with somebody that feels like they don't have hope? Maybe they've gone to prison. Maybe they've gone to jail, and and they feel like you know I don't have no hope. Maybe people. Maybe they have not. Like you said, you forgave yourself, and you, maybe they don't understand what 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 do I need to do. How do I get where a buddy is? My first step was to accept the responsibilities for what I've done. Amen. That's your first step. Because if you never accept responsibility for your step, for what you've done, you're never going to go forward. That's it's always going to be that stumbling block in front of you. Second is, whatever it is, again, it don't matter. Sin's a sin. Forgive yourself. Ask God to forgive you. Get rid of the worldly thing. Change your friends if you need to. Because most of the time when you come out, you go to the same little bunch of folks that got you in trouble in the first place. Right. If your true friend's not going to get you in trouble. Your true friend's going to stand behind you and back you and doing the right thing. Right. But you first you got to know what's right for you. And without Christ, it's not going to be right. That's right. So first thing is, is you need to get Christ into your life. Because he's going to help you remove them stumbling blocks. If you're sincere. That's right. But you gotta help yourself before God's gonna help. God's not gonna do it for you. You gotta make that first step. Once you make the first step, God's gonna be there with you. Amen. And I've had to drag my feet a long time. He's told me a million miles, but you know what? It reminds me of that song, The Footprints in the Sand. Amen. I didn't realize that, but if you take that, don't sing them, read them words, and let them soak through your head, your mind, and your spiritual mind now. And you realize, don't matter what the problem is. It don't matter what the circumstance or the situation. He will take you through it. When you feel like you can't make it, Amen. there he is. He's going to carry you. Yes. You have to make the first move. You got to. You got, I'm telling you, you have to. And it begins with the change. The change comes with you. Amen. And then once you decide, hey, this is what I've got to, it ain't, I won't, you got to have it. Because right. once you get a little of it, you're going to want more of it. Amen. And it gets Amen. easier. The yes. steps get easier. Yes. The road gets, all this stuff out here that ain't no good for you. There it is. It's coming in. And that's where you want to be. Amen. I promise you. I never thought that I would ever get to where I'm at. But, you know, again, the seed's planted here. When it grows, it blossoms out. People have asked me, if you could go back and change what happened, would you? And, it, and, it, and it's something to think about. And I said, you know, we're losing a life. I would change that. But if I changed that, would I be sitting here in front of you today? That's a good question. I mean, seriously. 
and I thought about it, and I said, you know, God, God does like he did Job. He moved, removed that hedge, right? Right. And lets the devil come in and call something. Because not only do it affect me, the family, her mom and dad got in church. So what I'm saying is don't go kill somebody just to do this. I'm saying be careful of what you do. It doesn't work out that way because some people have no emotions at all. They don't have no remorse. Uh, I'm just saying that God uses things to, what's the right word? In the end, it turns out good. I put it that way. It did. I, and as for me, it's kind of like going through a class, and it gets, the harder it gets, the more you want to leave. And I feel like that's what God done me. It took me a long way around getting where I'm at because He knew that I wasn't going. From day one, He knew I wasn't going to do that. Right. So you go through all this stuff just to get to where you're at because that's it. And I had a question asked him again. If God doesn't do bad, why does He let things happen if you don't? From day one when you're born, He knows your destiny. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's going to take you to get to that point, from point A to point B. So I had to go all the way around and get where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. But He put people in the right place along the way. Amen. And, and, and I'm grateful for those people. And I'm thankful for God that, that can see something in me that I couldn't see in myself. Amen. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more than excited to be where I'm at. Yes, I'm excited right. for what's in front of me. I'm excited for what he's done done and what he's going to do what for What he's us. about to do And for what him. he's about to do. It's going to get better. The scripture that popped in my head is one of the scriptures that I had um, that came to me, um, some things that happened in my life. And I, I was like, well, maybe if this wouldn't have happened in my life, then I wouldn't have been this way or I wouldn't right. have felt this way. But then I sat down and I thought about it in Romans 8:28, and that's what popped in my head. That's it. For that's I it. know for those for uh, which uh, Romans 8:28. And I and it skipped my mind, and I quoted every just by every day. And for not, all things work together for the good of yeah, those good. who love God, that's who are the called according to it's His more, purpose. It's not about us. That's right. It's about Him. It's about, it's about Him. him. So right. we know all, like you said, all things. It's A L L. Everything in your life. That's right. It has got you to the place in God of where you are today. It's all got to line up. And it, and and it's such a blessing because that's and, and I look at even what I do as a sexual abuse coach. Right. And had I never been sexually abused or molested, right. then and I went through what the healing and the deliverance, had, I right. wouldn't be able to help the oh, other women right. that have been sexually abused and molested. And 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 I was like, well, all of this worked out. It worked yeah. out for my good, even though it didn't feel good right. for my flesh. That's right. But it worked out for my good to make me the woman of God That's that right. I am today. Right. Made That's you right. the man of God that you are today. That's it. So and I, I, still, love I don't want, and I don't want to get to the place where I'm comfortable. Right. And, 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 and what I mean by that, when you get comfortable, then you lack. Yes. I want to be able to have them wheels spinning all the time, so I'm going forward. Right. I don't want to get stuck nowhere in the mud. Right. And and, and, and I pop, me when I, I'm one of them that if I set my mind on to do something, I'm gonna do it. Right. I don't like to sit back waiting on somebody else to do. It. I want right. to get, get it done. And there is a big job to do, and I call it—I ain't gonna call it a job, but it's just—it's a work that God has laid out to be done. And there's people that need to get in gear and you know, let's get this thing done. I know that's the truth. And, and it's not so—and it's more. I'm gonna pick on the men now. It's the men. Yes. It's the men. I'm the men are not me. stepping up. They're, I mean, they're not stepping up to do what they need to do. That's right. Uh, and again, I'm not picking on the women either. But I'm tired of seeing a room full of women to a handful of men. You say that again. Uh, and, and that's what it, that's, that's the problem. It is. The men are not stopping up to be the father. And, 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 and I know I need to step up and be better than her. Man. You know, there's no getting to the point you want to be, then get comfortable again. Right. Because as long as you strive to do better, 
it's going to get better. That's but when right. you quit striving to do better, it's not going to get better. Sure not. And, and, I, and I, people say, I'm, I'm more of God. Well, we all won't. But that's not true because God's going to give all His stuff to us. <laughs> it's us got to give to God. So, so right. the more we give to God, then the more we're going to get. But God doesn't give us all He can give. Praise but it's God. us, it's not God. I hear some preaching down off in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I mean, I just I get excited when somebody Amen. just I mean, going, and that's what it's about. It's not getting excited. It is. I talked about Ming last night. He says, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I said, man, it's more enjoyment. I got a re a refilling this weekend. Yes, I mean, Lord. just a re lifed up. I mean, you do. Uh, you can't drive the car all over town. It's only you're gonna stop for gas. And same thing with Christians. My brother's a pastor. He's an ordained minister. And he, what? He ain't been to church with us for two years. And I don't know why he don't go to church no more. But if I go down there ten times a day, ten times a day, most of the time he's gonna be at the table in his Bible. And I used to talk to him and say something to him about it. I don't know more, but the Bible tells you that. And I can't exactly put it into words about the coming to church and being the associated with the assembling of yourself. And I believe in that. Right. I definitely, I mean, I truly believe in that. And that's what it takes. Because you can't associate yourself with people of the world exactly. and leave a Christian life. I don't care who you are. And then you, and some people just get in there, and I'm just anti-social now. Yeah. You, you're not going to be a witness for Christ and you right. just shelter yourself off from people. That's, you know what I'm saying? That, there's, that's that's, right. that's not going to work. It, it's not. That's one thing that I mentioned at the first meeting down here was that I kept telling God I can't do that. And I, I, and I tell people this. He said, well, look, I don't understand why, because if you go out and talk to people all day long about work, why can't you talk to these people about my work? Exactly. And I thought, that's really now it's so easy to go up there, because I said, okay, God, I can do this. Yes. got to be confident. You can't go out there half wit and sitting in the middle of the fence and, well, you know, you need to do this. If you don't, you might go. There ain't no one. If you're doing wrong, there ain't no mic to it. I'm telling you where you're going. Amen. Donnie told her that I, don't, I have a, what did he say? I have a uh, non-forgiving attitude or something like that. And I know what he meant is that I like to be straight to the point. Can't shoot a coat. You Hell's can. hot. It sure is. It's going to be rough. Heaven's a beautiful place. Right. So you think I'm going to tell you, well, uh, well, if you kind of do right, you might get there. No, son, you either going to heaven or you going to hell. They in between. Say that. You know, I don't think God's going to come down. Well, if you come to me, I might let you in heaven or I might keep you out of heaven. <laughs> no, sir, you either going to heaven or heaven Amen. ain't going in between. Amen. What did the preacher tell us last night about how Jesus went down to the kids? Amen. You know, he, he literally, I mean, it's there for us. It's our choice. That's right. You know, we're either going to go or we're not. Amen. You're either going to do right or you're going to do wrong. Amen. If you want to do better, you can. Y'all better listen to Pastor Richard over oh, here. Oh, no, she <laughs> moved the table on me. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I, I've seen so many things that God showed me, but I just don't know. Uh, I used to love to sing, and I don't know. I thought about that too, but I don't know. In due time and season, what's yeah. in you is going to come it's out. Gonna come out. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. And nobody yeah. has to say, prophesy okay. anything it's to coming. you. <laughs> it's going to, and you're going to know. It's We've had two pastors <laughs> tell us the same thing you told her. Brother Rick was the last. And Man. I just, with Brother Rick, I don't know, it's just like glue just attached to him. I mean, it's just something about him that I just hooked up with. Yeah, I, mean, I, just, I love that man. It's just I don't know. And you know, there's, there's some certain people that you're gonna do that with. That's right. Cultures. And it's just something about. And I, I really enjoy that. I really do. I've enjoyed this because I felt like that, uh, I said something that I probably need to say to myself. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds crazy, but you say stuff and you get to think about what you're saying. You know, I really need to hear that for myself. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm telling somebody else, I need to make sure that I'm walking in the same footsteps. That I'm telling you that you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I really appreciate this. Hey, I hey. do. And I hope that it, that uh, that you all that watch this live, I pray that, um, and I know some things that Mr. Buddy said that um, you can relate to. And just know that your hope is in Christ Jesus. And know that there is life after, if you've ever been to jail or in prison, there is life after imprisonment. 
You are not too dirty to sit beside no one in church. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I just had to throw that yeah, in there. there you know? <laughs> so um, I, I thank you all for um, for joining in and joining us today. And until the next time, you all be blessed. There you go.